Hey guys, welcome back to Candlelight Montana here. And, and today I'm gonna to be talking about how market transactions work and how that gets into, or how that applies to going short and going long. So what is a transaction? A transaction is simple. A transaction is a pairing of a buy and sell order. That's it. Volume is synonymous with that, but volume is just the receipt of that buy and sell order. If you go to, if you go to Dick's Sporting Goods and buy a basketball, the receipt, that's volume. Hence why you have a certain amount of volume a day that a stock trades. But it didn't tell you if it went up or down, it's just the receipt of the transaction. And if you have volume, you have liquidity. Any market or anytime you have two humans and a good that has value, there's gonna be a market because people are gonna have transactions over that market. That's all it is. It's a, a transaction is just a coupling of a buy and sell order. Now, the in the context of trading and investing, there are five players. The, uh, the buyer, the seller, the brokerage firm, the market maker and the exchange. I'm going to start from last to first. The exchange is the is the playing field, so to speak. The New York Stock Exchange, the Chicago Board of Exchange, the Nasdaq, so on and so forth. Those are electronic marketplaces where all these stocks, options, futures, currencies, all these assets are listed. And if you're a licensed broker, you can plug in, so to speak, plug in and look at the value and, and essentially yeah, look at the value and, and the movement of, of these goods that you, that you are interested in. Then you have, so, so that's the playing field. Now the players, I'm gonna start with the market makers. The market makers are crazy, hyper good traders that trade literally thousands of transactions a day, right? And all major brokerage firms have market makers, TD Ameritrade, um, e trade, so on and so forth. They have they have market makers. There's only about two thousand of these guys, and they they have millions of dollars worth of education, millions of dollars worth of computer software, and they are given hundreds of millions of dollars worth of buying power each day, and they focus on one tops two stocks for their probably or for for most of them their their entire trading career, if not for a very long time. These guys are wicked good. And the reason they're called market makers is because by law, they must make a market. And, and what that means is this. If I'm, a, if I'm an E-Trade or a Scott Trade market maker and, one of my, and, a, and a client of Scott Trade wants to buy something and if no one else um, is willing to sell it to them, then I must step in and take the opposite side of that trade by law. I'm gonna stop there because I'm gonna get into market makers in just a minute. Then you have the brokerage firms. The brokerage firms are licensed brokers and they provide the service to retail investors who are who want to buy Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, or or or, or the Euro or the Euro USD or or futures, which is mainly what I trade. Um, and so they provide you with the ability to plug in to whatever stock or whatever exchange that you're interested in in looking at because they have the license. And the way that works is, and I did this over 10 years ago, so I'm, I'm kind of dating myself, but um, whenever you sign up to be a customer of, of, of whatever brokerage firm that you're going to sign up for and, and use their platform, there's almost always that, or there's, there's always that question of, um, do you have two or four years, I can't remember how long, worth of trading experience? Because they're trying to do their due diligence on you know, making sure that you know, whoever they, whoever they uh, provide the service for, they have a quarter of an idea of what they, of, of, of what they think they know what they're doing or however that I can't talk today. So they ask you that question so they can kind of they can kind of cover their butts. And it kind of reminds me of the subprime mortgage crisis. <laughs> you know when do you have a million dollars or do you make a million dollars you can buy this house? Yes, of course. Oh, sign on, you know, sign on this dotted on this dotted line and yes, you just uh, there are there are some people that lie and some people who if they have if you have a 401k then technically you have experience trading so yeah you can you can open an account and then you have the buyer and seller which is us the retail investor uses the platform and and essentially the borrows the brokerage license to be able to be plugged into new york stock exchange so that's those are the people and the playing field that um essentially governs or is uh is the playing field that makes up well the playing field of transactions so a huge part of transactions that you need to know is something called order flow. What is order flow? Order flow, and just to keep it really simple, you have the asking price and the bidding price. Buyers have a bidding price, sellers have an asking price. 
So a, the, current, the current price of any stock or any asset that does not matter, you can be looking at an options chart, at a, at a, at a Forex chart, at a stock chart, futures chart, doesn't matter. Transactions are the lifeblood of all markets. So it works exactly the same. Something I've said before is price is a mechanical function. This is why. Order flow. Sellers have an asking price, buyers have a bidding price, and then you have current market price, which is the fair market value where everyone thinks that's the value of whatever asset they're looking at. If price goes up, then buyers are hitting the ass. They are buying whatever the sellers are asking for. They're hitting the ask, making price go up. That's not volume, that's order flow. Volume, again, is just simply the receipt. It doesn't tell you where it goes. If price goes down, then you have the sellers hitting the bid. They are selling into the buy orders or they're selling into the bids from the buyers, making price go down. Now, since I'm talking about direction, I might as well explain what going long and going short is. Going long is you place a buy order. If price rallies, you sell high. And if you sell something, then someone else took the opposite side of your trade. A lot of people think I'm gonna buy a stock. Well, someone sold it to you. It took a transaction to make, it takes two to tango. So you buy low and you sell high. Everyone knows that concept. Shorting is just the opposite of that. You can sell high and buy to cover or buy it back low. Uh, a quick example. If I'm mowing my lawn and I don't have a lawn, if I want to mow my lawn and don't have a lawn mower, I go to my very kind neighbor, borrow his brand new lawn mower, and I'm mowing my lawn, and someone comes up to me and asks, hey, awesome lawn mower, I've been looking for it, can I buy it off you? And I tell him, well, it's not mine, but I'll sell it to you because last week I was at Lowe's and I know this is being sold for 500 bucks. So I told the guy, I'll sell it to you for 800. You don't have to go to Lowe's, you can get it right now. Problem solved, everyone's happy. Awesome, I get $800, I give him the lawnmower. I go to Lowe's, buy the lawnmower for $500, come back, finish mowing my lawn, give it back to my very kind neighbor, and I'm left with $300 difference. I'm left with $300 profit. I because I borrowed it, hey, I'm short $5 or I'm short whatever, can I, you know, can I borrow something from you? Hence the term going short. Um, I, I borrowed the asset, I sold it high, and then I bought it back because I need to give it back to the person who lent it to me and I am left with the difference. That is going short, period, simple as that. Now, what do transactions look like on a chart? And this ties into speed, which is something we covered in the last episode, which is so important. Anytime you have a balance of supply and demand or buy and sell orders, that's called basing because it goes sideways because every transaction that's taking place, it hits the ask, the bid, the ask, the bid, the ask, the bid, and it's just going sideways. There's no, consecu there's no consecutive or enough buying pressure or selling pressure to make price go up or down. It's just going sideways. So you have a balance of supply and demand, a balance of buy and sell orders. Anytime you have ballistic movement away from basing or a balance, it must, have been, it must have been created by an imbalance of supply and demand. So when price re-enters this area, it moves away from it very quickly. And the reason it does move away from it very quickly is when price enters an area of overwhelming imbalance of supply and demand. Whatever, directions, whatever direction it's moving away from, people are hitting the opposite side of current market price. And I'm gonna be going over all these structures, rally-based rallies, drop-based drops, drop-based rallies and rally-based drops, now that you know what transactions are and order flow is. If you know what it is, and if you understand order flow, then everything that candlesticks are doing makes a heck of a lot more sense. Now, something I wanted to cover was a real life example. And it, this is a beautiful test case of order flow. And it just happened recently. It's, it's, it's the event that happened with GameStop. This was gorgeous. Absolutely love that for once. Wall Street often, often bends people over. They got bent over in the hardest of ways. This was, this was gorgeous. This is the little guy, like, this is, this is Bulgaria just taking it to, you know, let's just say Russia or something like that and socking it to them. This was beautiful. You had a whole lot of retail investors, amateurs, going into this and buying low. And they put a massive amount of buy orders. 
Now, this is where the market makers, or what I told you about the market makers, by law, having to take the opposite side of a trade comes into play. A large amount of retail investors, or amateur investors, put a whole lot of buy orders in. They were hitting the ask on the way up, making price go up. So they have a whole bunch of buy orders. Then they sold for profit really high. I think it went up like over 1,000% in like 48 hours. It was crazy. Well, after price rallies that hard and that ballistically, for, for that short of time, it's, good. it's a pocket of air, which again, I'm gonna cover in the very next episode. This is all fascinating. Once you understand what order flow is, you see a candlestick chart and everything makes perfect sense. It rallied ballistically for 48 hours. There were no other retail investors willing to if uh, willing to buy the sell. So the people that were that bought low and sold high need to be paired up with another buyer for their profit. Well, no, no schmuck in their right mind would take would want to buy after a thousand percent rally in 48 hours. So by law, who had to take the opposite side of that trade? The market makers. They had to buy that sell order. They had to pair themselves up with that because they had to by law. And then on top of that, the, 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 the retail investor just doubled down and punched them in the face while the market makers were down on the floor reeling. They shorted. They put another sell order to buy back lower. Who had to take the opposite side of that, of that sell order? Who had to buy again? By law, the poor market makers, which is why a lot of these brokerage firms stop the short selling, which is completely not allowed to do. I mean, if you're going to dish it out, you, like, you need to take it as well. And I'm pretty like, that's, that's just illegal. Like you cannot do that. That is, that's, that's a big no, no, but that's why they, they, they stop short selling is because the market makers were already losing their shirts on this because they had to take the opposite side of that trade by law. Beautiful case of order flow. If you understand what order flow is, then everything that candles do makes perfect amount of sense. And you can also understand why Wall Street really had a bad, bad day that day. It was beautiful. So I hope this helped with understanding what transactions it, what transactions um, are and how it works uh, and, how transa- and how transactions work in the market. Um, and also help you understand what going long, going short is. If you like the video, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It actually does make a difference when you're in my position. You actually want people to do that. So anyway, see you guys in the next one, guys. 